Thank you. Three meters look like they're moving into the B halls, but not necessarily B. Four of the players there. In the meantime, Speedax made his way out towards long doors. He's got a smoke. He could try and run distraction. He could try and pull rotation. Three meters being quiet towards the B bomb site in the meantime, and it seems that's going to work. We've got Speedax. He's going to die on his sword towards the A bomb site. There are four players there. We've got Device trying to hold down the Venier bomb site, but they're all going to beat that. Absolutely. Magisk is there. What can he do? The flashbang was pretty effective. Not able to pop anyone, trying to delay at this point, but there's only so many opportunities you have for that. And it looks like Dream Eaters are off to a fantastic start. Astralis is going to be on the back foot. Device in a one versus five. They know exactly where he is. Probably wants to save his Kevlar. Maybe get a cheeky kill. But getting, getting through that tunnel, absolutely impossible. Dream Eaters absolutely crush it. But Ash B that is going to be successful there for them. And Astralis will be going for the force buy. You love to see it. Get those scouts going. That's a nice one from Speedak. Wow, beautiful. Didn't catch that, but he absolutely owns the flank. It's a nice little added detail to the B rush to have someone drop, do a cat drop like that. Lovely stuff from Dream Eaters. Well timed flashbang, or is it? It will be avoided by Glaive, will land a shot, but it is eco territory for Astralis. Two Desert Eagles on the map now, one on the floor, a third one. Could be collected by Sviat if he's feeling lucky. Could actually help him since he's got a Mac 10, give him some extra range. I like the color coordination from Dupree. There's a double peek actually from Astralis. So you saw his angle, but right behind him, or not right behind him, and by the big box is Magisk. You, you can see it on the radar. I like the lineup. Up by big box, there'll be uh, some elevation from the stairs. So that's a nice double peek on Eco for a CT side. One to definitely still add to your repertoire at home. We won't see it in action. It seems as Dream Eaters will be uh, stacking the long position. There's another tag for Device. Beautiful stuff from him. He can jump up on the bo jump up on these boxes as well. Chooses the low ground, takes one in the face, and maybe the worst is over for Dream Eaters. Yeah, surely it should be a save now for Astralis. They can carry these guns into the following round. Dupree's collected a Mac 10, so that can be dropped to a teammate. Looks like they're getting a little bit aggressive though. Throwing some nades in, threatening the bomb site, and that may actually just also be to buy time if they do decide to save. If you threaten the bomb site and kind of make it look like you're going for it, that will hold the Dream Eaters off for an extra time. And that looks like that might be the case here. Zipex, of course, stuck in CT. I don't know that he has been spotted. And you know, Dream Eaters have to be careful that if they attack that position, they do it in numbers because if Zipex gets a kill, you can't allow him to save a gun in that position. Um, so it looks like Dream Eaters will pick the safest option or go towards the long and pit position and they will be safe. So Astralis is still dangerous in this following round. And uh, we'll have to see if they can get anything done with what they've saved. But I like the detail from Dream Eaters. I feel like we don't see it enough that we'll see teams throwing the utility onto the short position from long. That is very strong. You can see it takes away a lot of defensive positions around Catwalk as they make their way across. You can, I believe you can also get the smoke down on, on CT ramp as well. So lots of lovely stuff you can do from that position and they seem more than aware. So good start from them. I think that's what we wanted to see, James. I do agree that uh, Device is really starting to look like Tom Cruise. Maybe when there's a Mission Impossible prequel, you can get some accent training and, I don't know, jump out the window or something. But for the time being, it'll just be the pistols for the most part. Glaive, of course, with that MAC-10 that was stolen in the previous round. That's a great start for Forrester, taking that long position, making the remainder of the uh, round surely a formality at this point. Grenades towards A. Molotovs to clear space to limit the pushes that these CTs could do. They've got to hop over the corner though, and he's got to find himself some Forrester. There is another SMG to be collected by his teammate now. And Dream Meters will head towards B. They've got the choke point. They're through the choke point rather. Dupree's outside the bomb site, and there's plenty more utility for Dream Meters to try and hold on to things. It's a weird spot for Astralis in the sense that Zipex and Dupree might actually want to save because of the Kevlar. They don't have any utility at all to really get in there. Obviously, they are buying next round. So that's sometimes, you know, the fact that you're buying in the following round does make the argument that you'll try to just go for it and get some damage in. But again, without utility, damage is pretty much impossible. So they're trying to control both exits. You can see two players in the tunnels, which is a more realistic point of defense. They'll show themselves there. Now, it might encourage the Dream Eaters to go out of the doors towards CT spawn, where now the rest of Astralis have rotated, where they'll have three players. This is actually beautiful. Right now, Dream Eaters think that Tunnels is not safe, but Astralis then stack 
the mid position. That is so smart, James. That is so damn smart. Well, they are considered one of the smarter teams in Counter-Strike. And now the game begins. 3-0 start for Dream Eaters. Best of one. We've seen best of ones drop by Australis before, which is why I didn't want to choose them for the 3-0, because while they're one of the strongest teams in the tournament, or they should be, best of ones, man. You just don't know. And Dream Eaters, AKA Gatekeepers, have been surprising from game to game. But again, indeed, now it begins. Device on the AWP, of course. Full utility for most of the players. Astralis, maybe the kings of holding onto the long position. That's a great start. Device taking Speedak out. Incendiary to hold position. Doesn't go as deep as he wanted it to. Oh, he's seen the leg. If Forrest goes for the repeak, he could have been taken out as well. I think he's lucky to get away with that one. In the meantime, Zipex has got some sound cues. Fiat jumping. I don't know if he was looking for info, but I don't think he saw Zipex. Now, there are only two players towards the B-bomb site. No one's really got an angle, but devices are up on the ramp. He could see over this smoke if they go towards the door. That's a beautiful HG from Dupree. Yeah, straight up through the window. They'll try to go the flashbangs. Nailed it onto Magis, but Dupree is clear. And he'll get all the kills that he needs with the additional help of Zipex. They uh, took clean, zero damage. Clean sweep indeed for Astralis. Exactly what you need on that CT side. And again, you, given the amount of damage that they managed to find in the previous round by tricking Dream Eaters, you know, eking out this extra couple of frags, that's not put Dream Eaters in a, an awkward position because, sure, they can get a buy-in in this round with the AWP. However, if they aren't successful here, that's going to be it. And they have taken some hits in terms of a utility. They don't have all the full utility they want. They're on a MAC-10 for Sviat. So it's not ideal. And again, all due to that trick from Astralis to threaten the tunnels and make it look like that's where they were setting up. More detail in Astralis and a KOTOR gr gown. Ground? I messed that one up, didn't I? Oh, God, that yeah. HE, the, the HE from Dupree through the door was so, so sick. He had the device with the angle over the smoke from A ramp to cover the door position. And he threw the HE to T's rotating towards the window and it did massive damage. That made me very, very happy. Now we've got a push coming in towards the B bomb site once again. Are they going to be ready for this? They've got to avoid the flashbang. So far, so good for one of them, but Dupree's going to get taken up. Magis with the Org. The Org is still so good at defending the B bomb site. Magis giving you an example. He's got five bullets left, not reloading. Doesn't want to concede this position. Could get pushed, but eventually it will happen anyway. Man advantage for Astralis on the retake. Yeah, those three kills from Magis definitely done a lot of damage. The last smoke used by Crowd on the doors. One flash is all that remains. So yeah, in a good position with the Org, the stolen Org. What can he do with it, though? There is, of course, Glaive coming from the tunnels eventually. How will Astralis coordinate this? They've got two outside the bomb site, one in the tunnels, and they have a flashbang and an HE grenade. Oh, Sviat's repositioning there, jumping across. Crowd able to take down Glaive in the tunnels. Now Sviat will jump up, takes down Device. Surprise! Zipex goes down as well, and Dream Eaters hold on. <laughs> and the hype begins. Four to one for Dream Eaters. After Astralis won around surviving with five, Dream Eaters respond. Well, they respond very, very strong. Let's have a look. Beautiful headshot there from Crad. He was pinched though. Oh, nice. Crad's looking pretty sharp at the moment. Really yes. sharp indeed. That's a beautiful play from him. Um, hmm. Go TV picks. Oh, well, it's Astralis. So for those of you on Go TV, Zipex all game. All game, every game. You pick Astralis. I always pick Zipex. If Zipex is on the server, Zipex is a Go TV pick every single game. So Astralis will mix things up here. Not going to have so heavy on their long defense. As Device has showed early presence there, perhaps they feel like they've conditioned the three meters to go a bit more quickly towards the tunnels and catwalk position, and that's where they set themselves up. Zipex and Device will be there. And they'll be looking to get something out of this. When you have a forward position like this, you really want to try to get a kill and then fall back. And that's going to have you feeling a lot more confident about your defense. But there is Speedak on the other end with the AWP. The nades come out. The, the bomb has been spotted. Device is committed. Gets himself a second one. Speedak tries to trade. He knows he has to. But it's too difficult. And there comes the nade to follow it up. And that's the struggle for you. Long will be taken as a response by Forrester. That is something. But it's still a two versus four. There is room for some recovery if they can take position. Forrester's top mid, but he's got no flashbang for his teammates, so it's dry peaks from Kinky, and it doesn't look like this is going to work out. Device moving forward now. Dupree's in the red. You see he was considering trying to trade them, but he's got to let Magis bleed. He will do the job. AWP rescued by Zipex. Astralis back to winning ways. Two to four.
Absolutely. I, I'm loving the sharpness we're seeing out of Dream Eaters. We're seeing, seeing some really nice mechanics from them. Forrester and Crad in particular, I've noticed they look really good. This was a strong setup though from Astralis. They bait, they bait into having, forcing the T's to try to go for a trade in response to losing that first player to device. They were clearly not ready for a setup there, because if they were, we would have seen them play a little bit uh, more forward. We would have seen more uh, flashes to allow them the space to do what they were trying to do safely. But instead, they get caught out by device. They're committed to try to trade for him. Obviously, that's part of the Astralis plan. They've got the setup so that Xipex can make it painful. And they the, get so much damage. The flashbang wasn't good enough from Dream Eaters as yeah. well. It would be so bizarre if Dream Eaters won this game of Dust 2. Honestly, going back to Dream Eaters versus Simon Gaming at the Major, the Dream Eaters on the CT side, it was wild. The improvements they've made from then to now, but to topple Astralis, even in a best of one, that would be quite something. That's, that's, a, that's a low percentage scenario. Technical pause at present. Well, we've been back and forth now. Obviously, Dream Eaters won the pistol and beyond. So it's been back and forth. We haven't really seen consecutive rounds since then. But perhaps this is a chance for Astralis to get that consecutive round. I don't know if Dream Eaters will force back. We haven't really seen too much investment just yet. Just a P250 on Kinky for the time being. So maybe they'll wave the flag. Actually, I won't say more. Some headsets are off. Device aka Tom Cruise with some uh, assistance being had there. But we do have speakers in the venue and the crowd. So we'll just talk about the keyboards. Well, this game so far, I, I, I'm going to deny you of the keyboard talk, has been really interesting because uh, for me, one of the things that can happen when you see a team that's an underdog like this, that doesn't have the experience, they're playing against a team that may very well be their idols. You know, Astralis are, are the team that everybody's been chasing and were chasing for such a long period of time. A team that's, uh, you know, really has innovated in so many ways and changed the flow of, of Counter-Strike. And, you know, Dream Eaters are up against them right now. And and maybe it's, you know, in that there's wins against Vitality and NRG that would, would set them up for more upsets in the future. Because we're, I feel like we're seeing the, the f a level of focus from them at this point that is really remarkable. Like it doesn't seem as though they have, they're really suffering from any jitters. Maybe it's because it's the beginning of the, the game. The fact that, you know, we're seeing such clinical aim from Dream Eaters and good team play and execution, they're decisive as well, is really encouraging. And it seems so far the only uh, lack that they've had is, is as you say, James, on that, there's some of the the, uh, the utility, the tactical aspect of their game. And that's of course, one of the biggest strengths that Astralis have. So. That might be a clear division between these two teams as time goes on. All right, Device has reconnected to the server. Maybe there's a round restore, and then we should be good to go. So every so often, if somebody um, asks why I always say Zipex when um, to watch on GoTV when Astralis versus anyone when they're on a server, basically. And it's because I think he's one of the players who is the best demonstration for, for players who have something to learn, which is most people, like if they're new to the game or just playing matchmaking or something. I think it, on the CT side especially, um, the positions he chooses to take and how he reacts to things, doesn't overextend, a very stable, solid player. I think you can learn good fundamentals or improve your own by watching him play, which is why he's always the go-to pick. So you can have more explosive people on the server, but I think that is harder to emulate. So my, while it might be more exciting to watch um, in terms of adding things to your own game, which I think is the most rewarding thing you can do. I think Zipex is always somebody that people should watch when he's on the server. I think it's kind of being able to kind of backwards engineer your plus EV situations. I mean, that's that's what he's, that's how I would describe him is he's always playing for that positive expected value. value, And that's something that he's extremely good at, <laughs> so. Backwards engineer plus EV. That's a very complicated. <laughs> sentence you just <laughs> said there <laughs> is it i mean it's i guess it's like you know if you're trying to fig figure out how to understand the theory of the game if you keep watching what zipex does you'll start to see some kind of rules and protocols that he uses which consistently give advantage because he's a player that always tries to maximize advantage and play from advantage and find that advantage and uh, some players can mitigate a a lack of good decision making with extreme amounts of skill that is not Zipex. He has both of those things. Huge skill, incredible decision making. But here we go. 
We're back in it. It will be perhaps a flat round from Dream Eaters. They've invested nothing, which I respect because they're against Astralis. They bought a P250. You li you're lying. It's okay. You've defrauded it's, it's, the audience, it's more Dan. Or less nothing. You've it defrauded the audience. P50 could go a hell of a long way, or maybe it'll go absolutely nowhere. Dupree with so many targets, trying to spread the wealth. He's left crowd of 3 HP. The M4's been collected. And now this is interesting. If they can go for a, for a wide peak or use one of the pistoling players as cannon fodder, then maybe they can get an entry. And perhaps a bomb plant becomes possible. They've got to put someone near the doors now with Stralis, or at least a window towards B, to stop a potential split of a bomb site. So this does make things pretty weird for them. It really does make things a little bit strange, but they should be okay. It would be, it would be an amazing result for Dream Eaters to be able to try to trade onto one more kill. If they, if they could find another kill, I think they've already exceeded the expectations for a round like this. Again, the Astralis economy is, is awful, and that is by and large because Dream Eaters have been playing really well in terms of hitting their shots as, and you know when they take their opportunities, when they, take, when they go for their pushes, and having some good coordination and communication. So that one kill will go quite far for them. Really nice that they picked that one up. That's like $5,000 of damage. Absolutely, yeah. It's very expensive buys on the CT side. And All here right. comes the buy for three meters. Yeah, let's see if... Um, well, what is Speedak going to do? He's got $5,000 in the bank. He seems to be considering... And he's going to drop a AK to Sviat and pick up the Scout instead. So... Did wonder how much he wanted the scope. So he's opted for a scout with Kevlar and grenades over an AWP with no Kevlar. Let's see how it works out. He's going to have quite a task. Device not showing too much fear. He's got to be aware of somebody jumping on the box in the suicide position as well. In the meantime, we've got players moving through the lower tunnel area. There, that's what he was looking for. Device really good with the tendencies, especially on Dust2. Very old G2 team used to always pop flash lower tunnel and he would be just facing the wall on short, waiting for it and just peek after it with confidence, round after round. And that actually works out really well for Device. It's I think in his perspective, it's hard to know 100% or not sometimes if you've actually made the tag. Obviously, he did get the tag on Crad as he jumped across, but it was through an object. So Crad is very weak and Device covers his tracks with the incendiary and repositions. So he doesn't get punished. Clave gets some information there, sees that Dream Eaters have taken over Catwalk. But this is the pivotal moment now for the T side, because this is the point when you have this bit of map control where you can put pressure on the A-bomb site, and you can decide to mix, uh, change up the pace, quickly rotate, and go for a B split whilst you convince them it's going to be A. And that, that's, this is like the dynamic of a Dust 2 T side default. Um, and it's the CT's jobs to try to, to have good positions, to deal with both things. And here comes the B-Split. So they threaten that A-bomb side, keep three players there. And here comes the B-Split. Forrester through the window. But Dupree and Magisk are making quick work of this push. Zipex still alive, but not for too much longer. Looks like Dream Eaters will take the B-bomb side. Nice B-Split. But the retake is going to be deadly here from Astralis. They've got three flashes. No molly for sp space control. Device drops the AWP for the AK. More nimble. Maybe there'll be an opportunity to retrieve it later. Speedak with an important shot with the scout into the B-bomb site in first place. No HE to go behind the box or anything like that. Speedak considering his options. What is the best flash to throw? Astralis being slow. Two of the three players with diffuse kits. Slowly edging through the choke points. He's been left alone. Speedak. Kinky one versus two. Now they've got a double peek, but they've got to get on the bomb as well. Huge frag from Device. Glaive didn't have time to double peek with him. And Device will race away to collect his AWP. Very good round from Dream Eaters, though. Again, you know, we see that that classic moment with the default where there's this window of time where the CTs don't know whether it's going to be A or B or not. And Astralis had three players really committed deep on A. They go for a very fast B split. And it's really Dupree and Magis that obviously make the difference here. In, in eliminating three players on their defense, they did, they did just enough to allow the retake to be convincing. We can see, though, that it still went down to to uh, the last couple seconds. Device would, was not able to come off the bomb. It's a very close round from Dream Eaters. They're playing a good Dust 2 so far, and they might just burst onto Dupree. He's going to be in for some trouble here. Can he get this? Looking for maybe a continuation. Spray falling back. Magis has a beautiful cover. Oh, God. It looked like it could have been really bad for Dupree, but Magisk has him covered. 
<laughs> knife out. Org on the B bomb site is so, so <laughs> strong. I feel like it's the best implementation of the weapon at the moment. Five to four, six thousand, five to six thousand dollars on most of these Dream Eaters players. But indeed, we are getting those consecutive rounds from Astralis. But some of them feel close. Dream Eaters, even with that, that split earlier on, they didn't have much utility, but they had the bodies. But the holds from Astralis are just too strong. Even with two players, they can be very devastating. And I'm not talking about eco rounds. <laughs> It's so funny there because Dupree, like the way that he looked at Magisk was like, thank you for saving me. Oh no. Sviat actually kills Forrester in all of that as well. Glaive with a double at the beginning. Dreaming is trying to go for a fast long take, trying to really mix up that pace, but Astralis really ready for that. They got four players towards A. It was such a good guess from Astralis. Mixing up that setup ahead of time has really paid off. Dream Eaters must respond now. They, I don't think that they realize this, but they need to go beat immediately to beat. There's a small window of timing where Astralis' play could backfire, but I think they may be a little bit too slow here. Still though, four players towards this A site, but there's no smoke to cover the approach to B. And with that said, Astralis will stabilize. Glaive makes his way towards top mid while all that is happening. So the net continues to close. Dupree spots the bomb. And they know where Speedak is exactly. And the longer Speedak takes to go for a play here, he knows he's going to be up against more players. And there's advice to finish off the job. Only Glaive taken out there on the flank. Astralis with a great read. They show over multiple rounds. B is a stronghold. Even when you've got four, we've got two. And we will stop you. Read that they go towards the A bomb site and crush the long position with four players alive. Marvelous stuff. The lineup there is a little brutal. <laughs> Not much you can do. It happens. Yeah. Six four now. Five rounds in a row for Astralis. I think it's also a situation where, you know, if you're able to identify that there's four tools there, you have to have the protocols like already prepared in your practice that like what the response looks like. Because it has to be so fast as a team, you've got to rotate straight away to be before the CDs can get back into position. And uh, Dream Eaters with the pistols will take over the long position device with a couple a couple shots. The grenade's doing the majority of the damage. And this is this is nice. Dream Eaters they might need a smoke for Xbox if they want to try to attack into Catwalk with numbers, but it looks like they're going across towards B. But with the push of Astralis, they will be wise to all of this. They've understood there's a big amount of numbers towards long, and they proactively take forward positions, really shutting down any options for Dream Eaters. Re really? Astralis is taking liberties at the moment. Glaive, that's a nasty frag from him. But while he's doing this, Zipex is still very aggressive in that short position. Forrester is still lurking in long, but that's information that Astralis are not too concerned about, especially considering a Seiko and they have the range. So they need not ask questions towards that long position, but short may be better to burst onto the site. And Zipex is holding control of that at the moment. He's got Dupree and Device behind him, so there can be grenades if they need them. As far as almost got full grenades at this point, Glaive is just absolutely taking liberties now. Still just standing there on his own with some pre-fire beautiful stuff. That is just nasty. <laughs> That's nasty. Astralis that. showing the dominance. He's at the point of no return. He's got no one anywhere close to him, not even for a support grenade. I love how, you know, th like how that is a rehearsed flashbang where it lands in front of the pillar that he's playing behind. So he knows he can peek whilst the flashbang is on the floor and he will not be blinded, but they will still be blinded. That's, uh, that's kind of a beautiful spot. You know, Astralis showing... I mean, you should never be surprised to see excellent tactical displays from Astralis. That is what they what they are absolutely known for. So Fx will find a very fast push down Catwalk. So Astralis didn't have anyone towards that middle position. They couldn't see that there had been a jump down suicide from Dream Eaters, which means the fastest possible timings towards Catwalk. And with double orbs from Astralis, that was a risky timing for Dream Eaters, but they do make it work. Might look weird to uh, some at home that Crad flashed himself, but there is uh, a matter where you peek before the flash goes off to catch people off guard. Very old. You see it from time to time. So there's no mistake per se there. Ooh. Magic spots two, but he can't outstay his welcome. Maybe got a sound cue of the player in the lower area as well. So he just got a hell of a lot of, lot of information. He didn't see the bomb, but he saw enough players to get an idea. Speed Axe in T spawn essentially with the, uh, with the bomb at the moment. So he's got to be careful. One minute on the clock, but Dream Eaters must realize that Astralis are just imposing their will and taking liberties. Is there anything they can do about it, though? They're going for the right response here, trying to get out of middle and trying to go towards that B bomb site. Astralis were gambling towards that A bomb site, of course. And Dream Eaters 
smartly didn't allow Magic Smoke to be an argument to go and force themselves towards that A site. That would have been suboptimal, to say the least. Trying to hold on to position. Glaive, though, will take down Sviat, who was looking for that top mid play. So it's a two versus two. So chances here for Astralis. Flash Smoke is all the utility they have. There goes the flashbang. Smoke, not sure if Glaive will throw that into... The, well, he can't throw it into Tunnel because his teammate's coming from there. Forrester. Four stop. They know that he's there now. Doing the dance, delaying. There goes the engagement. It's all about time here. Spinak is going to be forced to die, I think, with this bomb. Oh, he's jumping onto the... Is he actually going for the defuse? He's trying to stick it. Is there actually any time? Oh, oh my no, surely God. not. There should not have been time for that. Spinak, who's pinned down by the tunnel position. That is a steal. That was wild. It looked on the radar that Device was considering saving the AWP. It looks like he thought the uh, the round was lost. You might see it on the radar while all the action was going on on the a, on the uh, B bomb site with Glaive. A calculated risk, sacrifice one play with a chance. Absolutely crazy stuff. I can't believe they won that round, but we've seen them win more absurd rounds, to be honest, on the B bomb site. Eight to four now for Astralis. Three meters. Have another buy thanks to that bomb plant. There will be no half buy between the full buys. Seven rounds in a row for Astralis on the CT side. Are we heading towards an 11-4? I start to wonder. I, th I believe this uh, third AWP was actually a mistake as well, but they're just going with it. I mean, Dupree obviously a very capable AWP. And you know what? It, can, it could work to their favor. We'll see how it plays out. Brad actually... Oh, he's actually going quite far forward in mid. Zipex with the M4. Caught jumping up. That's some damage from Crad. Not bad. Of course, would have loved the frag, but... We'll see what device can find. He's a jump to Xbox, and really it's just about delaying and controlling the flow of the T's. They know that they want Catwalk, they always do. Bomb spotted, but that's not too much information. Again, they can still go back towards B, dropping into middle. Magisk has moved out of the B bomb side to cover that as Dupree looks with the AWP into the tunnels from the plateau on B. Not oh, a sound cues heard. Oh dear, the angles are beautiful from Magisk, but this time he won't get any frags. Can the damage be capitalized on? Previously, Device got a kill through the smoke before they started to cross, and maybe that's deterred them, and that's, maybe that's why they're going towards the tunnel instead. There's already a Molotov there, and the smoke is perfectly timed, but it's Dupree with the AWP. He's got to try and avoid the flashbangs. Maybe the orb was a mistake after all. Man advantage now for us for Dream Eaters. And there's no grenades for the retake and two AWP, so this has become extremely awkward for Astralis. Who knows, if, if he had an, a, 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 an M4 there, he could have played close to the smoke with the timing, but such is life. Yeah, and they've made awkward work before. They'll actually get rid of one of those orbs and see if what they can do. Glaive ready to burst through that window. There's no flashbangs to work with, though. That's really annoying. No incendiaries. That makes life very difficult against four players set up on the site. Zipix will take down Kinky on the trade, but the numbers game is in favor of Dream Eaters, so there's not really more that they can do. Zipix at least trying to make it costly. From 15 HP, gets shot in the face. And Dream Eaters will escape. So five rounds for Dream Eaters with a chance at a couple more. <laughs> and... That's not bad from them so far. If you consider the stolen round from Astralis, you know, this really could be a, a much tighter scoreline as well. Astralis have been playing the exploitation game on their CT side, and I am very in interested to see... I actually heard that in my speakers, in my, <laughs> in my headphones. I'm very interested to see um, what the second half will be like, because I feel like... At least in the minors, it was the big weakness for Dream Eaters was the CT side. But again, it has vastly improved, but they are against Astralis. And they've been looking pretty damn comfortable, Astralis, on this CT side with the uh, forward plays they've been making. The flanks going through b holes, going out long doors and so on. Their predictions putting four towards long. Two rounds remain. We'll see if Dream Eaters can keep it close. Again, best of one. So much opportunity for them and no real pressure. Got nothing to lose with the teams they're going up against. Zipex and Glaive towards long. Short is open, but you expect the T's to spend time and utility taking this. So we go, we've got the flashbangs again. This time they swing with two players. In that previous round, Device got an easy pick off after that flashbang came in. So there's some adjustment there from the Dream Eaters. 
And Kinky, Kinky trying to keep it honest in terms of the flanks because that has been a problem from Astralis. Oh, Dupree, he finds the timing. He listens to that those grenades getting primed and he knows that that's his timing to peak and he'll be absolutely correct. Picks up a kill and now they've lost two before they can even make the push into the A site. This is an absolute disaster here for Dream Eaters. They couldn't execute the push and they've lost pretty much everybody. Yeah, this is beautiful from Astralis. They are uh, they are really exploiting Dream Eaters with these plays. We'll come back to it with more time. Spiedak's got 6 HP, and Spiat there will go down in unison. As the uh, smoke, as the grenades were deployed in a mid position, and there was a push through middle doors, Glaive pushed through long doors at the same time and um, took out the player who was throwing grenades towards long. So they both got caught off. When you're being taken out like that by the CT side, what on earth are you going to do? Well, there's only one round to worry about now for Dream Eaters. And I think it is a worry the way the CTs are playing and pushing things at the same time. They're punishing a uh, very, very telegraphed Dream Eaters plays, it seems. Sonic's been doing his homework. Yeah, it's uh, gonna be a mid push coming in from Astralis down into the tunnels as well. We haven't really seen that from them too much also. Two players set up around this position. Glaive is gonna spot one. They're gonna go for the trade. It's successful and they'll fall back. It's both Dupree and Device trying to commit into this. Surely Dream Eaters will not expect Dupree to now be here. Device can play the baiting game. This is a setup they had previously before Glaive went down, but he got a bit hungry, it seems. Dream Eaters slowing things down. But honestly, how, even now, how do you make plays as Dream Eaters? Everything, all your setups, they're just pushing through doors and just shooting you while you've got grenades in your hands across the map. What can you feel comfortable doing, even in a five versus four versus Astralis? Right now, Astralis still don't know if it's going to be a B play or like what's happening because Dream Eaters could just be chilling in the upper tunnels right now for all Astralis know and using players towards the ace on the map to fake. So we'll have the information play from Dupree. He's going to look up the stairs. He's going to see nothing. The timing here is insane. The timing is so... Dupree just checked upper tunnels. He saw nothing. And now they see all the presence on A long. Astralis have no idea about this B push. What a beautiful fake timing from Dream Eaters. They could not have played this more perfectly. Forrester gets the kill. This will only serve to sell this play even more. Forrester annihilates two players on A now. And Astralis are going to be very surprised to realize eventually the bomb is on B. This is absolutely ridiculous. Dream Eaters are playing well above their pay grade. That's one of the biggest baits I've seen on Dust 2. A full rotation from Astralis. They have absolutely outmaneuvered them. This is so, so impressive. Again, considering all the pressure from Astralis to have these a mid-round call like that, where, where have they got all this from? It's insane. Three meters. Dream Dupree now. One versus three. Looking for an ace to bring this round back. Crad's pretty uh, heavily damaged. There's no more grenades, and that bomb's pretty far ticked. It's been quite the bait from Dream Eaters. That is a much-deserved sixth round from them. Fantastic stuff as we move to halftime. Oh, what a T side. Could it have even been more rounds from Dreaming as they look ready and raring to go? We'll see if they can bring that form into the next half. Stay with us. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back, ladies and gents. Our Dream Eaters going to do it again. They did it to Vitality. 
They did it to an RG. Are they going to do Astralis dirty as well? Because they had a great first half. They showed us a lot of great executions, good team play, good strategy, and they were hitting their shots. And they've, they've made it for, you know, they made that first half really exciting and showing Astralis that they are dangerous. But they are trailing three rounds and they're on the CT side. It's a very different beast playing CT does too. Yeah, but boy, they just keep shocking Dream Eaters. I just can't believe how much they've improved. I mean, yes, Astralis did um, really outplay them in a lot of those rounds, but just uh, from what we saw from the minor, it's like two completely different teams sometimes. But now they've got it all to do on their CT side. Pop flash through the doors will reveal some information in terms of the Glocks being fired, but it is a pistol round, so nothing too crazy is happening. Dream Eaters playing a reactive game here for the most part. sviat has got one more flash in the hole and a defuse kit. There's a flash for Astralis, so he'll be falling back. Just establishing some control, denying a little information, putting three meters in slightly worse positions. Two smokes, there's two decoys here for Astralis. I do wonder, are these decoys, are they gonna use them for some kind of fake grenade setup or fake flashes later, or do they just buy them for fun? That's a very good question. Astralis have that cat control. We talk about it, this looks Absolutely like every default would look in the terms of the setup, the topography of Astralis players. Speedak taking one to the face. Never nice. Good win for Astralis early on. They've got Molotov, a Molotov and two smokes. So all sorts you can do with that. Ooh, they'll be getting the smoke towards the corner on A, towards B as well. They're actually going to fake. They're going for a fake here, and it's actually going to pull away players. Device, here's the running Kinky. That's a great shot, and that is so needed as well. Oh, my goodness. Spinak comes back in as well. Kinky, long range. My God, what is this? Dream Eaters annihilating this push. Astralis' fake was working. The rotation was happening, but still Dream Eaters respond, and it's Kinky all the way. Such is the nature of a pistol round. So I saw what was happening with those Glocks. Um, Magisk was waiting to put the Lurk Smoke in towards the B-bomb site, which he deployed. The other smoke was thrown near the kind of um, the bricks which stick out near the truck in CT spawn towards B. And behind or, or into that smoke, they threw one of the decoys to suggest that they're actually pushing the B-bomb site. So that was the purpose of the decoys. So far, so good with that. But getting pops in the head is, tends to be a problem in pistol rounds. Pop flash from Kinky. He's got some support. Always nice if you, if you can get a CT into the pits, but um, that will come more into play in the buy rounds, I'm sure. Anti eco territory for Dream Eaters. Astralis have bought absolutely nothing, or they have nothing if I missed a grenade. Five Glocks on road with not much else. Again, this is about fragging. This is about just making Dream Eaters spend an extra four to five thousand dollars if they can get a frag on even one player. Sviat's gone a cheap route with a uh, 5-7, so... Well, actually, he's got no money in the hole, so I suppose he dropped for one of his teammates. Minute 10 on the clock. Astralis have managed to take short with no utility, and now it really is that gauntlet run. Take a bullet for the president, get the bomb towards the site, try and get a short plant if you can. Spidak actually has basically no support. Kinky's long, but he's got no flashbang, so if Astralis' timing is right, they might get a bomb plant out of this, but <gasps> maybe they're going to get devastated by the HE. Could have been a lot worse. Can they plant the bomb? It's not looking likely. There's an incendiary available as well for Spidak. Yeah. Or Spidak, I should say. And the, 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 what does that word mean, Dan? I don't know what it means. <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. Really well handled there. Obviously, no utilities to support Astralis' push. And the fact that Astralis buy no nothing, absolutely zero there, not even a flashbang, I think shows a respect that they you know, believe that Dream Eaters will not make a mistake. And also that they want everything in their buy rounds to contest Dream Eaters. Speed act on the AWP straight away. All those frags of the MP9 certainly helps the money situation. We get a cap boost coming in from Dream Eaters. Kinky with a very fast timing as will Speedak. Here's the jump. Here's the boost. Here is... Do they check for it? No, they don't. Missed opportunity there for Speedak. Oftentimes in the default, a lot of T-sides will actually go for the boost behind the boxes, which clears that position, that boost. But Astralis didn't go for it, perhaps not expecting it to be there so quickly. And I wonder if that jump was heard there by the Astralis players. It might have been. Let's see how deep they go. Again, if you're if you're not hiding the fact as a T team that you're going through mid doors, you can spray these positions, the elevated position, the position standing behind the box. There are lineups to shoot somebody in the head. 
No one ever does it though. Nastral is trying to hold on to the lead at the moment. Three meters threatening to tie things up. Again, best of one, you just never know. And Dream Eaters continue to surprise. They are ready for an A play, it seems. If there's a Molotov, though, for the bomb site, then uh, Sviat may be in a weird spot. Currently sitting on the plant for long. 40 seconds remain. You can see the bomb is making its way towards the B bomb site. Again, we've got Crad in that position boosted up. But if there are two smokes in the mid area, then he might not be of so much use. And Dream Eaters is going to be really out of position. Forrest has only got a UMP on the B bomb site. It could hardly be weaker for the Dream Eaters on B. Trying to avoid the flashbangs. B is going to get deleted immediately. And Glaive can just wait for the rotation. Doesn't look like they put any smokes in that mid position. So there'll be angles for Dream Eaters, but that'll take them even more by surprise. There's less time to post up and start rotating because you don't see those grenades. And indeed, they're just going to say, okay, hands up. We're out of position. We're not going to throw all our toys in the bin. We're going to go and save on A long. Yeah, you like to see that. I mean, if, sometimes you just have to do this. It's, again, you know, very similar to Inferno. There are, the, the, the rotations are so incredibly punishing. I mean, that, that actually just goes to show as well like how important utility is in delaying your opponents because if you do get enough delay, then you buy time for that rotation and the round can be contested. But you can't do that. You've got to give it up, and that's what Dream Eaters will do. Astralis has to be cautious here as well. They have no money, so whilst they can maybe sack one or two players to try to get a cheap frag, see Glaive trying to get a cheap frag. He's going to actually fire, I think, almost every bullet in his AK. Ooh, Kiki! Oh my goodness. <laughs> you can tell Glaive knows his angles, but he doesn't have time to get that one. So, all right. Astralis picking that one up. Dream Eaters going for that save. What is the response now from Dream Eaters? It is hard to have a response on a dust two. It's difficult to take the initiative. It's not a map that offers too much in the way of decent options for CD aggression. And here comes a long take from Astralis. Very standard stuff. And the challenge from Dream Eaters. And that is Sviat taking down Dupree. Gets traded immediately. And looks like Kinky will give up on this position with Speedak as well. What do Astralis do now? Still showing presence towards the long positions. Apex outside the long doors, just keeping an eye on top mid in case anything happens there. And Speedak looks to be going to hold on to the short position. Standard for the CTs, you lose long, you take short, you lose short, you take long. You need to hold something, otherwise you have no hope of a retake. Brad spots one into you spawn, actually. Almost getting blocked by his teammate. That would have been brutal. There's no one in B for the time being. I don't know if Clave is posting up an angle on the platform. No, he's just keeping an eye on everything at the moment. You're going to get smoked off from the B bomb site. So what do you do now, Astralis? They were spotted in T spawn. They still got four alive and there's still a question mark for Dream Eaters towards that long position, which will keep them towards A. You can see Astralis making their way over. Now, Spidak was really deep towards that short position, but now we've got three CTs wondering what's happening towards long. Will Astralis have the timing towards B? Well, Forrest to have the right timing as well. He has a smoke grenade. That is nicely timed. Forced to peek there. That smoke's not going to do too much at this point. He was alone, of course. They can just run straight through this. They have no choice but to do so, and they'll find an empty bomb site. Very nice. And Dream Eaters, ah, they might be in a position where they have to save this again. They don't have any utility to break back into this, and there's simply too many players in Astralis alive, so they will have to give, give this one up. Fortunately, they have some forward positions around middle, so they're not going to be caught by any flanks or anything like that. Sometimes you can get, when you go for these saves, you can get caught by a late lurk. That will not be the case here. So they get to keep these guns alive, which is nice, but at the same time, they're losing rounds. Yep. So that's that's going to start to be a problem very soon. At least Crad can get rid of the FAMAS. But indeed, Astralis moved to 11. The second round for them in this second half. And if we ignore the pistol, it's basically 2-0. Not the biggest score in the world, so we need some more evidence to see where momentum will take us. Now, do Dream Eaters have an aggressive play in the bag? Will we see them go for a, a short boost with Speedak or something along those lines? Speedak can drop, or well, people can drop for the other two players, so they can buy around what they have, and they will. Astralis, full of success at the moment. Dupree is still carrying a Mac 10. We'll see if he chooses to upgrade. He is a bit short, though, so. Maybe they'll keep the money together. Tack pause from Dream Eaters, their first of the game. On the scoreboard, um, 
Most people are turning up at the moment. Majeski is slightly ahead with his B action. 15 for 9 at the moment. Zipex and Sviat are at the other end at present. Sviat is 4 for 14. He's not having a, having a great time, but we'll see if he can make the difference on the CT side. You can see that Device, the kind of the AWP matchup, and Device definitely having the impact as an AWPer, as you would expect. Speedak, I don't think we've seen him on the AWP quite as much as, like, you know, you'd expect on that T half. And I think that's why we're seeing the stats be so weighted like that. But of course, we're going to see a lot more orping from him on the CT side. Crab picking it up as well. He's a dab hand, and this is a fast push coming in from Astralis towards B. Forrester, how many does he get? Three quick ones on the defense for three meters. They've shut it down. Astralis try the shock and all. They try to speed up that pace. They try to catch them off guard, but it is them who get caught. And Dream Eaters, this is not over just yet. They need this round. They need to not lose any players. Their money is exhausted. They must survive with all four. Yeah, it's interesting if they just threw this in to mix things up. Or maybe it was because of the time lapse. They were expecting something funky, like a hold of long or something. They might have the right position, but it might let Dream Eaters back into the game. Not over just yet, though, is it? Two versus three now. This is doable. Although Glaive goes for the reload. Mad is taking damage, taking even more than that. Glaive knows the CTs have got to be towards the A bomb site, but is he able to cross towards towards B bomb site? Sorry, is he able to cross towards A? Show some presence towards the middle doors. 48 seconds. He'll hide his position. But what are his intentions? The longer he waits, the less CTs he'll have to engage. Rather than three towards B, he might be one towards A. But he will need to cross. Two AWPs on deck for Dream Eaters. However, it's Kinky on the A site with an AK-47. 25 seconds. Kinky, 44 HP. See him hiding there, so I assume his teammate's got the angle. A little jiggle, maybe. Oh, he's going to walk straight into it. And that will be round number nine for Dream Eaters. I was trying to think what, exactly what Astralis is trying to catch there. One of the things that has entered the meta, is, and we saw Astralis do it, is you know having four players on the A long position at the beginning of the round, leaving just one on B. But if you go for that kind of a round, what you're doing as the CT side is you're leaving middle completely open. And so I think that you know fast timing in, in middle is probably more appropriate as a response to that. So I don't think that's what they were trying to counter strat. I think it was just they just wanted to throw in a fast B. That does work out quite well sometimes. And we see a D4 set up here from Dream Eaters. Another long take from Astralis. Although well, not committing too heavily into it. Glaive stuck in the corner. There goes the incendiary. He's in trouble. Smoke does come out to get him out of harm's way. And that's, that's Dream Eaters winning long. That's important. A lot of uh, utility was invested by both sides. But if you hold on to it, you're definitely happy. Device, maybe it's all about the bait. Oh, it might just work out kinky. Don't cross there. <laughs> you definitely would regret that. And you don't need to do it. And so he won't get curious. And that means he gets to keep his life. You don't want to be too curious as a CT. The more curious you are, the more opportunities you're giving your opponent to take you out of the game, to put your entire team at a disadvantage. So you've got to be really careful. Crab's position is quite interesting. He's in the middle of the entrance to B with an AWP. A very forward position where he could hop back if he's lucky with one shot. But maybe that allows Dream Eater to have more focus towards the A bomb site. Just under a minute on the clock. A timely incendiary from the CT side. Now, looking at the utilities, Fiat is really important. You can see him on the radar, number nine. He's got two flashes, so if Spidek needs assistance on the A bomb site, he can throw these flashes behind his teammate. So Astralis eat it, but Spidek can face at the same time and just keep shooting. That would really uh, limit the push, but these smokes will be a problem. He's going to post one up himself. That will help with Molotovs and so on. Maybe there's a gimmick as well. Kinky's on the flank as instead. And Fiat's made his way onto the bomb site. The CT flashes have come and gone. It's all going to be about the fragging now. 20 seconds. That is a huge headshot from Debris. But Fiat still needs to be dealt with. And it's Fiat alone now on the A bomb site. Looking for the spray. Has he got enough bullets? Down to the pistol. The bomb is still with Magisk. If he'd got that frag, who knows? Yeah, that is some key kills coming out of Astralis. I don't know how Dupree got that headshot behind the box. He must have just gone swung out for the pre-fire there. Cried, moving in with the P250, gets the headshot, but gets eliminated. And Astralis, that, I mean, they survived with three, but that was very marginal. Zipex and Dupree coming out huge to save that one. And, wow, what a, what a situation. It's not really left Dream Eaters of any money, and 
I wanted to talk very quickly about Crad's position in uh, the upper tunnels. As you mentioned, you highlighted that he was halfway in the tunnel, looking into the upper tunnel with the AWP. And one of the reasons why that's strong is because you get an off angle, and if there's T's in that tunnel, they will be walking. It, you can be almost 100% sure that they'll be walking, so it's an, a very easy shot. Big pushes from Dream Eaters. It is an eco round for them. Kinky's got a HE, but he's not really in range to throw it. He's got a double peek of his teammate. The flashbang's there, but they'll get a kill regardless. Can the CTs protect the weapon? They can for the time being, but it will be collected by Crad. And there's oh. a HE to create some space as well. Sviat so pushing in the meantime. Both these players are low. Both Dupree and Magis. He could get two kills out of this, but he's got to pull his gun back out again. Oh, he might not check the angle. What does Magis choose to do? Sviat's going race carring towards T spawn. He is the last player though, so that's a lot of information. However, Zipix has the bomb in T spawn. Quickly collected. Magis with some good timing. That could have been a little more hairy, but here we are. Astralis now with a few rounds of comfort. 13 to 9 will feel a bit more uh, comfortable for them. He was quite nervous to watch, bearing in mind they'll be a big favorite for this game. 2% Dream Eaters to the 98% for Astralis and the Pickums. Yeah, it's not an ideal situation for Dream Eaters on the buy. They'll be with an MP9. They don't have enough utility. It's it's a really awkward position because you don't really want to give Astralis that 14th round and you can get the AWP out on Speed Axe. So they're opting to go for it. They have one kit on Speed Axe. Again, not ideal. My God, Device with two big tags through the doors. Extreme damage done. That is a huge problem. Astralis looking to get towards Catwalk quite quickly in this round. Now again, you know, once you have Catwalk, you can threaten A, you can go for B. It's it's already difficult to know exactly what what you're up to as far as the CTs are concerned when you pressure like this. See that smoke and that molly will deny the AWPA anything from that position. And they're trying to get Dream Eaters to throw some grenades in. That's what those first sets of nades are about. Get rid of the counter utility, but in they go. Speed act with the first one. He needs to get more, but he can't be too deep. Could be so careful with this. Crack goes down. Very difficult shot there. Speed act cannot connect it. Oh, has he got any lineups here? Looking for a peak. Oh my god. Jumping shots with the MP9. That's the gun to do it with. And, and all of a sudden, it's the two versus two. Not bad. Dream Eaters have a chance. Yeah, but Device has the angle in CT spawn. He was flanking with the AWP, taking out the players. That's an important smoke, but there will be some kind of gap for Device closing the angle. But he's running distraction while Magic is getting the kills in the meantime. Ring around the Rosie. Speed like might be in a safe situation now. He doesn't have a kit, so does he just walk away? Maybe there's one on the site. Looks like he wants to go for it. He's got the sound cues. Beautiful shot from him. But where is Magic? He's by the goose position. Beautiful stuff. He could have been anywhere. 14 to 9. Dream Eaters lose everything. Oh, yeah, very unfortunate there for Speed Ack. He is extremely fast. And I think he was gambling, like betting it all on the last player being Gandalf there. You do have to do that in these clutch situations. You do have to just play off a feeling and be 100% focused on, on one possibility, narrow it down. You can't check everything. So here we go, 14 to nine. Dream Eaters will be having to play against overtime, it seems, as they opt to go for the full save in this round, more or less. A couple pistols purchased and one flashbang, that's it. They stack towards the A-bomb side. So Astralis with a spread across the map, not willing to risk Anything too crazy? Dupree's creeping in on B, just as Sviat makes his way through the doors with one flash. See the communication. There's plenty of movement in that short position now. Sviat taken out, no flash for him. Oh, they could collect an AWP here, but maybe not because device. <laughs> okay. Well, he's got a lot of help from Glaive in fairness. <laughs> that must have looked crazy from devices POV while we were watching it but I mean, <laughs> for him obviously it's more important than for us match point and plenty of them for Astralis maybe the last buy for Dream Eaters let's have a look outside the pistol Dream Eaters have won one round in this half so far yeah so see pistol and eco are put together so beyond that from the buy rounds onwards they've won one round that's where you measure their success so uh, they've got a lot to do to go to overtime. Yeah, the T-sides are so difficult. It's a fast timing down suicide from Astralis. Sviat is in a great position here. He gets himself to very nice. Looked like a quick scope from Device there as he goes for the trade. Device picks up another one. And now all of a sudden there's problems here for Dream Eaters. They've lost B, they've lost middle. Speed Act trying to make his way across. The flames obscuring Zipex's position. The scope definitely helping Zipex out there against Speed Act. Kicking in from the flank, but just Missing Zepex, he'll slip away. 
at the last moment there. Kinky in the one versus three to save the day here for Dream Eaters. He knows Zipex is lurking around this position. Zipex knows he's there. That is.